Uh, the government is saying that it'll allow scientists to explore gene editing to develop different strains of crops which will produce higher yields and be more resistant to climate change. Uh, Sam, to you first of all, do you welcome the open up of, uh, opening up of gene editing? Would it be good for the planet, do you think? I do welcome this. I think it's a, a great opportunity, actually, which we can take advantage of outside the EU to introduce more innovation-friendly policy. I think gene editing does have potential, for example, to reduce the amount of carbon-intensive fertilizer that we use to grow crops. I think it also potentially uh, will enable us to grow higher yields on, on existing land, which means we can leave more land for, for nature and for carbon sequestration. So I think this is a, a, win, for, a win for the climate, and it's only the first step. I think there's more to do. The government's going to look at the, the wider regulatory uh, regime on gene editing, um, but, but I, I strongly welcome it. OK, and, and Dave, what's your take? I mean, George Eustace, the Environment Secretary, has said it's a tool that could help us tackle some of the biggest challenges that we face around food security. Uh, are you in agreement with Sam and George Eustace? Well, I think there are some positives that come up with the idea of using GMO crops. Um, as Sam's mentioned, the nutrition, the more resilience. However, I do think that we, we need to recognise that there isn't long-term evidence on how this affects the environment. And this could actually be tinkering with nature and causing larger issues than we already face. Um, there is lots of questions about biodiversity and remembering that in this you know environmental crisis that we're facing climate is one part and that's only one boundary out of the nine that we have and biodiversity is there as a very prominent second boundary and uh, there may be issues around biodiversity with um, following through some of these scientific technologies. Uh, Days, the government is saying that foods would only be allowed to be sold if they were judged that they don't present a health risk, they don't mislead consumers, they don't have a lower nutritional value. Does that give you some kind of reassurance? Sadly, not really. Um, I feel that the government has a track record of putting forward um, profit before people's health. Um, we can see that with things like um, the Cambo oil field or HS2 um, or even the Silvertown Tunnel um, expansion. So there is that kind of question of can I truly trust this current government um, to uphold people's well-being before profit? And the answer, sadly, is no. Sam? Um, I think this is quite a cautious move from the government. They're, all they're doing is making the research and development of these uh, genetic varieties of, of uh, genetically engineered varieties of crops uh, easier and, and less bureaucratic. There are still going to be strong regulatory processes around the actual selling of these gene edited uh, crop varieties uh, in, in, in terms of you know people's people's uh, supermarket shopping. So you know I think the government is right to take this step by step. And you know the weight of scientific evidence, I think you know the the, the consultation response that they had from from academics in particular does show that people think there is no additional risk uh, from to, to biodiversity or to human health from, from this measure because it is simply okay. accelerating uh, processes that happen naturally in, in nature or indeed through traditional breeding methods. So it's not really introducing foreign genetic material. Which okay. I think is, is traditional with GM crops.